Having trouble with navel orange worm in the orchard? Sidetrack, now miso mating disruption is your best bet to minimize loss and maximize profitability. Used with Tresse's new multi-gender lures for your monitoring program, you can achieve the quality yields you deserve. Contact your local sales rep today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network reporting to you here today with Peter Larby from the UC Cooperative Extension. He's been with us uh, now, the Extension, for a little over a year, and he's been working away, getting out to meetings, including this one today, Pistachio Day, and talking to growers about sprayer calibration. Obviously, you know, whenever we're doing a fungicide or a herbicide or a pesticide here, we're taking them down the rows and, and obviously want to save money or maybe they want to just go a little bit faster down the row. Maybe they put too much out in the field. Maybe they don't put enough out in the field. You know, we want to get good coverage so that we can minimize the amount of passes they have to make in an orchard or vineyard. So what can you tell us about um, just get it, getting it just right? Okay, so getting it just right, um, the... The baseline is um, calibrating your, your sprayer. That is a, the first and foremost thing to do in order to ensure that your sprayer is well set up to do the job that you intend it to do. Um, and at the heart of sprayer calibration is getting the application rate right. The application rate is your gallons, that is the volume that you are putting out um, divided by the area. So if you, a, a sprayer travels a certain distance or covers a certain area, how much volume has been applied um, per that area? And it is very important because the, the, the pesticide label will tell you for your particular crop how much you can put um, per area. And you need to stay within it because the, the label is the law. Okay, so sprayer calibration is uh, intended to um, measure what the, spray, the sprayer um, puts out and then make um, the necessary adjustments that will make the sprayer do what it's supposed to do. And um, the main steps that are involved, making sure that your travel speed is right or measuring that your travel speed to know what it is for the particular field that you are going to apply your, your spray. And then also um, determining what the nozzles should be um, based on your travel speed, what your nozzles should be um, in order to put out the right amount of pesticide that will give you your application rate. But another thing to consider is for your, um, your canopy, you need to determine if you need all the nozzles on, on the sides of your, your sprayer. You may not need all the nozzles depending on the, um, the stage of the canopy. If you have unfoliated um, canopy, meaning that the amount of um, leaves is, is less, you may not need to apply too much. And then also um, in in air carrier applications or maybe air blast applications which involve the use of some air volume to pass the, the spray droplet to the target, um, the amount of air that is being used also matters. The air basically helps to um, achieve penetration, you take the spray into the, the, the target canopy. But if the air is too much, that is going to um, result in carrying the spray droplets beyond the target. Right. So one other thing, one thing to, to do is to determine if all the, um, all the nozzles need to be used for the application and also how much um, air is required. And this can be, can be uh, managed by um, deciding on what the travel speed should be. So travel speed and the volume from the nozzle would determine what your application rate would be. But also, you need the, the nozzles to be direct, well directed toward your canopy. And to, to do this, you need to um, visually inspect your, your nozzle and see which nozzles are directed to the canopy. Then again, deciding on how many nozzles you need, you can use um, a nozzle catalog 
which, which is uh, provided by manufacturers, you can use that to find which nozzles to use for the, uh, to achieve the application rate. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't end there. You also need to, to actually measure the flow from the nozzle. Um, so once you measure the flow from the nozzle, you can know what type of adjustments you need to do in order to get the application rate right. Because you do not want to apply more than the label says. That would be breaking the law. Uh, in most cases, when you apply less, it is not, I mean, it is not breaking the law because they, there is a maximum what you, you can apply. But the other thing is that when you under-apply, you would be reducing the efficacy because then the dosage is reduced. And then and, that and, can... And that poten can. potentially building resistance. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Potentially building resistance because you, if you underdose, you may not be able to control the, the, the particular pace that you're trying to, to, um, to control. And then over time, this is going to build um, resistance. But... Um, after you have um, done your measurement and, and done your adjustments, you also need to be able to determine if your, your spray is reaching where it's supposed to be within your target canopy. And how do you do that? We have <coughs> yellow cards. We call them water-sensitive cards. I mean, these cards, on one, upon contact with, with water or with moisture, they turn blue. So you would put these... Uh, these tags you're saying up in the tree at different in, levels so at you different can levels at different locations where it matters much to you because you you want your spray to reach this point you want it to read that point you want to read that point but you as a grower or an applicator who is trying to see what your your spray application is achieving you have to determine where the um the spray the the water sensitive cards would need to be placed right. The water-sensitive cards do not tell you that your spray is going to remain, um, I mean, to deposit on your target. It tells you that your, your spray is reaching that location. Right. And the reason why I'm stressing on that is that it does not have the same surface condition or surface characteristics as a leaf. So um, that difference. But it, can, it tells you that my spray um, application um, it's resulting in spray reaching this extent, reaching that extent, and reaching that extent. Right. The rest is your spray formulation, whether it has adjuvants, um, I mean the appropriate adjuvants to result in correct spreading or sticking to the, the target right. and so forth. But these are extras that can, that are, that can be considered in um, trying to push um, your spray application to to result in uh, inappropriate coverage and also beyond coverage, appropriate deposition, um, which is your, your spray being retained by your target. Right. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of steps that you, precautions you want to take just going into it. So obviously, probably do some test runs and, you know, with those tags and stuff just to make sure that you've got it just right. I know, you know, maybe the, as growers, we just we just want to get it done, right? <laughs> and we have limited time to be able to apply these uh, chemistries, especially during the rainy season. Right. Uh, but, you know, like Peter said, uh, if we want to do it right, this is uh, these are some things that we really should take into consideration. So thank you, Peter, for, you, for sharing this with us today. We look forward to seeing you at upcoming <laughs> events and, and speaking with you more. So uh, you, read more about these things in our publications. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.